we're moving on to something a little more fun and a little more drama. Here we go, boys. I'm running into big problems here. I got the pow pow. It's gonna hot and steamy in here. You're creeping me out. I'm Kristen, and this is Matt. We've spent the last four years sailing our $5,000 Craigslist boat to some of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean. From spearfishing in South Andros, Bahamas, staying in a treehouse and riding horses through the rainforest of the Dominican Republic, to even dodging hurricanes in Puerto Rico. We could have never imagined what this adventure would become. After gaining more sailing experience, we knew we had to make some serious upgrades to our boat if we wanted to keep this journey going. So we decided to go all in with our 40-year-old boat and get a new engine. We soon realized that we were in for more projects than we originally planned on. There's gonna be some major changes coming up, so hit subscribe and join us for the journey. What's up guys, welcome back to Sailing GBU. As you can see, I'm smiling pretty big because if you didn't catch last episode, we got our engine running and it is purring like a kitten. I'm hyped on it. The engine's doing so good. It's such a relief to have the engine in and running. And the only hurdle I might have to overcome later on in life is the shaft alignment, but that actually looks really good too. So I'm super excited and I'm just ready for the next step today, which is getting to be able to control the engine. There's no point having a woman or an engine that you can't control. What? <laughs> unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Just kidding. Just kidding. Don't unsubscribe. That was a JK, JK, LOL. <laughs> um, but no, I don't have my cables yet for the engine, one for the to control the throttle and one to control which way I'm going forward or backwards. So we've had problems with this in the past because our old engine was so rusted out. We, and our old transmission was old, we couldn't get it to go backwards anyway. So we had no control over the last engine. And uh, so what we're doing today is getting that done. It's kind of hard because the pedestal mushrooms in, so it's a tight fit and it's always frustrating as it's so small, but we're gonna get it done and we're gonna gain control over this engine and over this warmer. I hope you're talking about the boat, not me. Yeah, the boat. We always refer to that as a she, so that's the only one I'm controlling today. It's the only one you'll ever control. Oh, oh, oh yeah? <laughs> what about this? Tickle, tickle. She's ticklish. All right, guys, so before we get moving forward on the project, I want to say I apologize for the scenery. My blue tarp got vetoed. There was some new boats coming in at the marina and they needed space down at the end of the dock. So I had to pile everything up in here, which was not ideal for me. Obviously, as you can see, it's not great to have to move all this stuff while I'm working, but whatever. They let me slide for a long time with a never ending tarp. All good things must come to an end. But we got our handy dandy nine foot Dometic cables that I've been pushing in and out and they work really well. I think it's gonna be perfect. I would have preferred eight feet, but we'll make nine foot work. So I'm gonna have Kristen feed these down to me and I'm gonna go down there and deal with it on the other end. All right, so I'm going to be coming down on the left side. Wait, wait a second. Okay. Okay, let me take it a little bit. Okay, that's on the left side. My left. Okay. Here we go, boys. This is gonna come out good. I got a good amount hanging out the top still. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, ready for the right side? Come on with it. Okay, bring it to me. Okay, good to go, all right. Okay, nice job. So now that we got them down in here, I'm going to be able to attach them to the mounts. Thank you. 
right, so now that I have the throttle cable connected, I can feel here that it pulls nice and smooth. That's a good tension. I like that. So first part's going pretty well. So everything was lining up and everything was looking good. I've been working on this for about two hours, which is basically consisted of me putting this nut on and taking it off. So I didn't film it. I didn't think you guys would be terribly uh, entertained by that. I'm running into big problems here. I, it, this is such a small area. You see how it's big up here, which they also fit 9 million apparatuses in this six inch diameter. There's so many things in here. So I have to stuff both of these in with cables and mounting bolts, and I just can't fit it in there. And then that reduces down to a three inch. So in that three inch space, I have to have a, a three, a two inches of chain that's attached to my cables that I steer the, you know, that turn the rudder. And I have to fit all this in there too, and it's just not fitting. Basically these pieces that I have to clamp on to hold this in place are interfering too much with the chain. And I feel like that's gonna be a chafing and a breaking problem. So I think if I cut myself a small access, maybe a two by two inch chunk out of here, I'll be able to get to this and make it smaller and really eat up the little half inch that I need in here. And I'll be able to just put a plate over that later so that this keeps the structural integrity. It doesn't just snap off while I'm sailing in rough seas. So that's going to be my go, what I'm going to do now. And then if I can't get that to work, I'm just going to have to buy a new one of these. This one's, it was made 700 years ago and it's not doing so hot anymore. I can't figure out how to do it. I've combed my brain. I've been in this thing so many times since I snapped this thing off, driving through a dangerous reef. And He's I spiraling, it. guys. I'm spiraling. I hated it then. <laughs> I hate it now. And this is just a want to, you know, be upset. Be upset for now with this project. All right, guys, it's the next day. We had to take a break from that pedestal, but we have came out with a solution and we pretty much got it all figured out. And tell them, Matt, tell them what the solution is. Well, I had my male intellect on a pedestal, dealing with that pedestal, and I, was, I had one vision and I was like, this is driving me nuts. And I was squirreling out a little bit. And luckily, I married a genius and she said, what if you just raised all that up like six inches or so? Like just basically take this piece that you already have and flip flip it over the way it's going. And I was like, oh, that, that wouldn't work. And then she was like, why? And I was like, there's no reason it wouldn't work actually now that I'm it thinking works. about it. it and works. we lined I it up and she solved the problem and it's extending the head of our ET there. It's like a skinny neck that blows up the into top the of the head. pedestal. The top of the pedestal. It's going to extend that a little bit, which I was like, aesthetically could look a little doofy, but I don't really think it's going to. And it's actually going to give more clearance um, for the controls. So you basically just improved on Edis, Edson Marine's design and they still kind of make them the old way. So y'all should probably just hire her to come fix I mean... y'all's pedestals. I can't say it enough, guys. Beauty and brains over here. Okay, I'm really blowing my... Beauty and brains. You're right, Dad. My dad always says she's a smart one. I said, I don't know. I'm pretty smart. And he's like, bro, you ain't a smart one, bro. But anyways, we're doing something kind of ratchet on that. We're flipping the top of our head of the pedestal upside down and lowering a chunk. So we will have to make something later to hold the compass part, but that'll be easy and there's no real load on Well, that. yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it was your idea. It's gonna take my genius to actually make it work, function, and look good, but it was your, you, you, you did take me out of the hollows. We're a good team. Good we're team. a good team. Teamwork so is the we dream figured work. that out. Hopefully that'll all go to well, but we're moving on guys, because enough with that crap. We're moving on to something a little more fun and a little more drama. So as you can see, I'm down here by these corners and you could say we've turned a corner on this boat. We went from back trying to just bend it dry and glue it where we cracked a million things and had to make some beautiful, delicious trim to now we turned the corner and we're gonna take your advice. A lot of y'all said, get a heat gun, get a heat gun, Larry Laminato, you need a heat gun. So went over to my dog, Salchich. I got the pow pow 
and I tried it on a small piece of trim earlier and I tried it out. It worked really well. I think it's going to be more difficult with a bigger piece, but I think it's going to make this possible for us. <laughs> All right, so first step is I'm going to cut down the height of the laminate just to make it more manageable once we're in there. So I'm going to sand and smooth out my edges a little bit because they're not beautiful yet. Then I'm going to put on the edges and then we'll be prepared for our big dangerous bending piece. gentlemen all right I got her in here so this red line I believe from the measurements is where I believe we're gonna have to bend it and that's gonna be our first bend so let's heat it up honey let's get it let's, <laughs> let's heat get it a, up honey let's get a hot <laughs> steamy in here you're creeping me out So that took a really long time. We got some of the footage on there, but we just kept working it back and forth. It's still hard. It's almost not a 90 degree angle, but it's pretty tight. And if you don't get the angle perfectly in the spots it needs to be, it kind of bubbles. So we're struggling a little bit, but it's onto the second curve. And now we have one curve coming and now we have to make the other curve and we got to make a U out of this. So let's get into it. guys it's the next day and I've been dragging my feet to get out of the house today I'm not gonna lie because it took all day to make that template piece for the wall we think we got it there and now it's time to glue it and if things don't go right or we crack it or something along those lines we pretty much wasted an entire day yesterday so I'm trying to be positive and we're gonna once we get in there, we're gonna try to glue that thing down. What do you think, Matt? You feeling yeah. confident? Well, I feel confident, but it's a lot of pressure because not only did we waste our time, but whatever video you've watched up until now, <laughs> we would have wasted your time as well. And that's what hurts, you know? I don't want to make you guys watch a bunch of nonsense, but I think it's gonna work out perfect. We're gonna glue it, but we're gonna glue it and do it, and it's gonna come out perfect, I think. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start gluing on one side and kind of do it little by little as we go. We've had problems with that in the past, but there's really no other way to do it that I can find other than if I had 15 people here that each hold it, um, then I could do it. But there's so much movement when we're setting it in place here that 
if it moves an eighth of an inch here, it ends up being two inches on that end. So it's pretty crazy. I need to glue this down at least to the first third of it so that it's set. And then I can make small adjustments on the rest of the way out. guys it's ready to glue it on so far. So we got it on and I am in shock that it actually glued on. All the spots that I thought were maybe going to be sticking and not glued down, like maybe bubbling out, actually sealed down with the glue. I don't know if it's because we used the roll-on glue or if we just got lucky, but it actually came out good. I'm shocked. Like this is going to look like a premium kitchen when we're done. It's going to definitely be legit. The heat gun made a huge difference. Thank you to everyone out there that watches and told us, hey, maybe a little bit of heat gun might help with that Formica. It certainly did. It was still not a simple process by any means. It's not as easy as just heating it up and getting it in there. It could be under different circumstances. If I were to have built this cabinet, it would have been a lot more square and uh, everything like that. But it's a little bit funky, so it took some took some pretty creative melting and it took us quite a few times of trying to heat that dang thing up but you know what i think it came out good i'm really excited and it's time to start routering we're not done with it yet we have to cut out the trash can and router the top off and then but it's almost done and now we'll know we'll be able to do the old booze locker next this one should be a lot simpler it's not multiple bins one bend is pretty easy two bins a foot apart two feet apart is not as easy So now that Benda Palooza is over, we got everything looking good. I got my trash can, my bad boy slider trash can cut out. 
all lambed out there. It looks really good. And now I'm going to put the old one back in free of lamination to see where it fits and see how much of this door I'm going to have to trim up to make the sleekest, smallest gaps I can possibly muster. Let's see what it looks like. Oh boy. All right, give it a pop out. Give it a pop out. Nice. Now we just need to finish, obviously, the sides and do all that, but we'll do that on our own time. But it looks good to me. What do you guys think? All right, so I had to raise up a spot for my compass to fit in after I had gotten my cables done. Really wanted that done in case a hurricane comes. Now I can move the bow. I did a good job with that, but this I was a little more worried about. I didn't know if I was going to be able to do this, so I just kind of hustled and did it off camera because it the was extension like, part. He wasn't sure if he could make it. The cap comb because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to bend this or do it in a timely manner. So it was a lot of trial and error. And it came out really ugly on the inside, as you can see, but on the outside, it looks pretty good. It's light PVC. It's going to do a really good job, which is basically just holding the compass up so I can see where I'm How going to navigate. How did you make it? What I did was I curved out all these little cuts in the middle, and then I used the heat gun to bend it around, and then I used a little bit of Bondo and some screws to attach it where it folded together. So really happy with that. Came out really solid. I'm really excited about that. And it gave me clearance for my knobs that come up under there. Both of these come up when I'm working the boat. So I'm like, this got a lot of weight off my shoulders. I'm really happy with how solid this thing is. The shifters over the moon about it. But Literally. it looks kind of weird. Yeah, it looks kind of weird because it's a big long, <sighs> big old long daddy you know how we like to do long daddies around here but uh yeah i mean it's a small pole and a big big tip so it's uh it's not really ideal it's definitely not sleek and beautiful uh, we did a lot of work beautifying this boat and this definitely stayed in the old ugga category it still looks okay you know this is the function over fashion portion of the boat i think you just need this stuff to work it doesn't necessarily have to be beautiful as well <laughs> All right guys, so we completed some of the laminate and we also, the best news is we got our cables up and running. Now our engine is running, it's blazing, it's going, and <laughs> what else am I gonna say about it? We got cables, so if a hurricane comes now, we can rip right out of here. Yeah, we can ride. That's the one thing and that, that's kind of a problem in and of itself. And I'm worried about it because now that I can leave, I might leave. I might just get up in the middle of the day and say, let's go. Digga, 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 digga. Finish, you know, finish, finish this down the road. There's no reason we can't laminate in Curacao, in Buen Aires. You know, there's Settle no Settle down there, big dog. <laughs> Settle down. We got a lot more work to do. We have some more lamination, obviously, that's taking over our lives. I don't think we were aware of how long and how much laminating was going to take, but here we are. We got that to do. We have to finish those countertops. We have electric plumbing. We got a lot of things left to do, but I'm really excited. I still have to sew the cushions, y'all. So we have some stuff to do, but I'm really hyped. I couldn't be more excited. This boat is coming together and I 
if you would ask me five years ago if we'd have a nice outside paint job and a brand new engine in this boat, I would have laughed in your face. So it seemed impossible at the time when I was getting dengue fever in the DR. You know, making what were we making? Some sweet stacks on YouTube back then. We were making about nine hundred bucks a month to split between <laughs> betwixt us. That's not horrible. It's not bad. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discount my blessing, but it definitely was not get a new motor and paint your boat money. So, you know, yeah. luckily we've been blessed and, you know, y'all took care of us. All the people that hit subscribe Yeah, so thank you for us, everyone so who watches you. our videos. We wouldn't be here in this spot right now if it wasn't for you guys watching our videos. So, thank you for watching another one. Hit the bell button so you don't miss one. Come back next week. And we still are going to do that. I don't even want to say the word. It starts with a G and ends with way. We're still going to do that when we hit 200K subs. So, make sure you hit subscribe and... It's a long journey right now. So it takes a long time to grow on YouTube, it seems like, or we just suck. I don't know, but... <laughs> Could be a mixture of the two. We gotta produce our shorts. Yeah, we're gonna hook you guys up with some cool stuff once we get to that milestone so we can keep it all keep it all simple and easy. Once we hit the 200, we're gonna pop off and do some pretty cool things. Hopefully we can do that by the end of this refit. That'd be great, but it looks like it may be a down-the-road sort of deal. Makes it easier when you can do shipping and stuff like that when you're on land but either way check us out on patreon if you want as well we do some uh, live stuff there there's always you know these guys are a couple weeks ahead or as far ahead as we are we try to keep it as live as possible over there for our patreon pals so you know we've been riding and we've been getting a lot of stuff done and i'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel i mean it's still far away but maybe we can do like a shakedown sale pretty soon, you know, before we finish all the electrics and all the plumbing. We might can, you know, run out to do a little loop-de-loop, -loop, come back, crash into the dock again with our brand new motor. No, now that we have a brand new motor, you should be able to slowly reverse and perfectly get in line. I'm going to put all the bumpers out. Really. <laughs> uh, fenders, sorry. I know I ain't supposed to call them bumpers. Anyways, the we're dragging this out, out, guys. Thanks for watching. Come back next week, and we'll see you then. Bye.